Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Weezer. If you've never heard of Weezer before, then you're probably not watching this video, which means that I don't have to go over their history, I don't have to say a nice summation about who the band is, you already know that, and we all know what you're here for. You sick fuck. You want a stranger on the internet to tell you what they think are the best and worst Weezer albums to see if they agree with you. And if my opinions are the same as yours, you're gonna love me. If not, Nah, we'll talk about that later. But if that's what you want, that's what you're gonna get. My opinions on the Weezer albums. My feelings about Weezer. But first, real quick, I just gotta say something. This channel is not a Weezer channel, okay? Yes, this video is about Weezer, and yes, I have other videos about Weezer, and yes, I've made music inspired by Weezer. And yes, I will be doing more Weezer content, but this is not a Weezer channel. I'm planning to talk about all the finer things in life. You know, music, video games, TV shows. All I'm saying is, think twice before you hit that subscribe button. You don't know who I am. You don't know where I've been. Anyways, now that i gotten that off my chest, without further ado, the video you've all been waiting for. Weezer, Worst to Best. By Slush. But it's not a Weezer channel. It's just a Weezer video. Alright. Look, I'm gonna be real with you, these first few albums, not my favorite, I'm gonna be going pretty hard on them, so, you know, fair warning. And I can think of no better way to start this list off than with Teal. <sighs> Jesus. First of all, I'm personally offended that they wasted a color on this. Like, come on guys, really? A self-titled cover album? I mean, I guess it's actually kind of funny. If it was meant to be funny, then I sort of get it. But man, this album is at the bottom for a reason, and that's because I find a lot of these covers hard to listen to. Africa and So Happy Together, those are great. But when I listen to these other covers, it all just feels so unnecessary. Like, these are not even songs that I want a Weezer version of. You know what would have sounded cool? A Beatles song. Like, imagine a Weezified version of Your Mother Should Know, or Happiness is a Warm Gun, if they could even pull it off. But instead, what we do get is... No, I don't want no straw. I mean, it kind of just speaks for itself. And the worst part about this album is that they've done covers in the past that are way better than these. What about the State Farm jingle? That cover kicked ass. Don't tell me that they can't just redo covers that they've already done because they did it with So Happy Together. And no, I haven't forgotten about Rosanna. They recorded that cover at the same time as Africa, and it's fucking awesome. Why didn't they use that? Me too, all the way. Well, you get the idea, and I obviously I'm being super negative, so to say something nice to sort of balance things out, I, I will say that River's voice sounds pretty good on most of these recordings. Okay, now that we're on to real albums, this is, without a doubt, the worst of the worst. I mean, what can you say? Are you really that surprised? This album was thrown together as a way for Weezer to fulfill their contract with Geffen quicker and sign to a new label. It's made up of mid to low tier B-sides that were re-recorded with the full band. Some of them are actually pretty good. I like me some trampoline. simple, but it scratches the itch in a nice way. I'm also partial to autopilot, especially that bridge. And it's pretty cool that turning Up the Radio made it onto an album seeing as it was a giant collab between Rivers and fans. But the rest of these songs are weird or bad, and they feel like they're missing something that would usually be there on a finished Weezer album. What the hell kind of song is blowing my stack? It does not make me feel good. I mean, I could just go on. I Don't Want Your Lovin' is worse than the demo. Everyone is an extremely boring Nirvana ripoff. I'm a Robot sounds like an infomercial that got picked last in gym class. And then the album closer is yet another cover song. Unbreak my heart. Decent song choice this time, though I would have preferred the superior Don't Speak. But to be completely honest, this is not the band's best performance. That can be said for a lot of these tracks. I think what I've noticed the most is that a lot of these songs will have moments that are actually pretty good, but then the rest of the song will either suck or just be incredibly mediocre. And that's why I feel like this is just not a good album. But at the same time, I barely even consider this a Weezer album, so meh. Okay, now that we've gotten those two out of the way, the next albums are gonna be the real 
real Weezer albums. Not just some hobbled together nonsense full of covers and unused songs, but keep in mind that we're still at the bottom of the list here. And that's because to me, this next album is at times offensively bad. It tries way too hard to sound like Top 40's pop, which makes it generic and safe. There are like two songs that I would recommend to people, but that's it. You guys know which album I'm talking about, right? Right? I'm talking about Blackitude. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm talking about Rack. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> Sorry, that was weird. Um, I don't know what, what that was. One more time. I'm talking about Rad-de-Black. Okay, the truth is, my brain can't decide which album I like less, Black or Ratitude. Now, I'm a little bit biased here. I got really into Weezer around 2006, a bit before the Red album came out. That was your classic, old Weezer good kind of guy. But I liked the return of the emotional guitar solos that were on Make Believe. And I took the good songs off of Red as a sign that Rivers was moving in the right direction. But then, Ratitude happened with its 40-year-old men dressed as teeny boopers and its Little Wayne features and its lyrics. It was an absolute onslaught of cringe. And just to add salt in the wound, they were doing the poker face thing at their shows. Just can't escape the covers. When the Red Album came out and we got Mustache Cowboy Rivers, that was like watching a midlife crisis happen, but it was endearing because Rivers owned it and was connecting with his inner child. When Ratitude came out, it was like watching a grown man pretend to be a child. Point is, I'm a little biased against Ratitude for that reason. The Black Album, on the other hand, I have no emotional attachment to, I just think it sucks. Now, both of these albums are, to me, extremely mediocre and cringe to the point that I don't want to listen to them. Zombie Bastards, The Girl Got Hot, are these terrible songs? No. But does anyone ever say, yo, let me cue something up and then put on Piece of Cake? No. That has never happened ever. And if anyone in the comments is claiming that it has, you tell them that they are liars. Here's how I'm gonna decide which album is better or worse or whatever. I'm gonna take the songs I like from both albums and compare them to each other to see which has the better good songs in my opinion. And then I'm gonna take the songs I dislike from both albums and figure out which album has more bad songs. And then hopefully that'll settle things. So the good songs for Ratitude are Trippin' Down the Freeway, Put Me Back Together, I Don't Wanna Let You Go. And for Black, the good songs are Can't Knock the Hustle and High as a Kite. Now if I rank those songs all together, it'll look something like this, which means that Ratitude has my favorite of the bunch but Black generally scores higher, which means it's kind of like a tie. But now to find out which album offends me more, which is a very important part of this process, arguably the most important part, let's rank the bad songs. So the offensively bad songs from Ratitude are Can't Stop Partying and In The Mall. These songs are basically unlistenable to me, especially In The Mall. Oh my god, this song is bad enough as it is. They're already taking the elevator to the escalator, but then they just literally play the guitar solo to Tom Sawyer, and it's like, why? Do I really need to say any more? Can't Stop Partying, I don't think I'll ever get over how much they butchered that beautiful demo by turning it into this piece of crap. Okay, bitches, Weezer and this Weezy. Upside down MTV. You know what, wow. Hearing those two songs again pisses me off so much that there's no way I can rank Black lower than this. Yeah, I don't like Black very much, but at least I don't get angry listening to it. Ratitude it is. Weezer tends to be associated with negative emotions. You know, sadness, anger, the pain. But happiness, that's a little more rare for their music. We've had happy songs like Holiday, Wind on Our Sail, In the Garage, but they're usually just a small nod here or there on the album. But the one exception to that rule is Spring. And I think Spring shows us exactly why there are so few happy songs from Weezer. Now, I already made this Shakespeare makes me happy joke in my last Weezer video, so I'm not gonna do that again. But yeah, this album did not age well for me. It's just very unrelatable. That and the album sounds like a fucking infomercial. And then there's a little bit of love, which just triggers my PTSD for that era of music where every band was like, hey, ho, God, I hated that time period. Now this isn't Ratitude or Black Levels of unlistenable for me. It's just not my favorite album. I will say though, I really do like Opening Night and Angels on Vacation. Those have some fantastic melodies and song structures. The fuzzy guitar crunch feels pretty nice on this album when they actually use it. And I can also appreciate the more adventurous moments in River songwriting here, like the ending bit of the chorus to All This Love. Let me let it up. I got all this love that I've been saving up. So, not a great album for me by any means, but I am a bit more forgiving towards it because of its short runtime. But if this was a full length album, you know what? Let's not get into it. So, 
Wow, look at that. We're five albums down now, and it's only taken me... Jesus fucking Christ, this is gonna be a long video, isn't it? This next album is kind of a controversial pick. Realistically, this is probably gonna piss off a lot of people. But the next album is Boomtown by Ozma. It's just such a disappointing release. I mean, I'd even take Pasadena over this crap. And the Kickstarter? The Kickstarter? Okay, fine. You got me. I'm stalling. I just... Don't want you guys to get upset because this next pick is really controversial. The real next album is Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. I mean, yeah, okay, in a vacuum it's an alright game, but they really did that franchise dirty. I mean, Banjo-3E? Banjo-3E? Okay, 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 I'm done stalling now. That's the God's truth. The next album on this list is actually Maladroit. I know, I know, people love Maladroit for some reason. I just don't get it. I don't. It's got some good songs. I like Keep Fishing, December, Death and Destruction, Burnt Jam. Hell, I even like Slob. But for every decent to good song on this album, there's one that feels completely unfinished, half-baked, lyrically weak. I'm talking your American Gigolos, Dope Nose, Take Control. Even Space Rock, which I kind of like the sound of, feels oddly unsatisfying. In fact, that's my problem with early 2000s Weezer in general. It often feels forgettable and unsatisfying to me. Like when I listen to Maladroit, I think the songs sound catchy, but after a few days, I suddenly can't remember how any of them go. It's just poof, gone from my memory. And that's something that doesn't really happen to me with the other Weezer albums before and after the early 2000s. I do like that there is actual emotion on this album, and that the guitar solos aren't just repeating the verse melody like they are on the Green album. I'm also happy to say that I think December is one of the best songs Rivers has ever written, hands down. It's a beautiful song. And shoutouts to Acoustic Slave made me realize that it's actually a pretty decent tune. But honestly, this isn't an album I find myself returning to almost ever, because it doesn't do anything great with its sound. It just feels very middle of the road. So I guess what I'm trying to say is... That's right, I put Hurley above Maladroit. Which, of course, objectively means that I would rather listen to Where Is My Sex than Keep Fishing. Okay, so look, I think the production is not so good, Al. And Rivers sings really weird in some of the parts of this album. But honestly, there are some really quality songs on here. Unspoken, Runaway, Time Flies. And I know deluxe versions don't really count, but where else am I going to have a chance to say this? The guitar solo from All My Friends Are Insects is so good. Every time I hear it, it's like, why is this so f***ing good? You know why I rated this higher than Maladroit? Because of that guitar solo, which isn't even on the album. No, but for real, the reason I rated this higher than Maladroit is simple. The album is consistently more entertaining for me than Maladroit is. To me, these songs are more attention grabbing. They're memorable and enjoyable, even if they don't reach any major peaks. Like, yeah, it's true, the best songs on here are not really up there with the best of Weezer in my opinion, but the overall level of quality is enjoyable enough for me to come back to it every now and then, which is not something I can say for the albums before this. So what can I say? It is what it is, but it is better than Maladroit. Is Weezer an alt-rock band from the early 90s? Yes, to the untrained eye, Weezer may seem to be an alt-rock band from the early 90s, but to the eye with brains, they're making a point about the music industry. For you see, Weezer is a lot like Van Halen. First, you have the band, and then the sweet, sweet tapping. I wonder what Crush Music thought when they found out that the next Weezer album would be called Van Weezer. When I heard that name, I was like, oh god, this is probably going to be terrible. But I was wrong. Very wrong. Van Weezer is not a bad album at all. It's cohesive, it's got a few legitimately great songs, the weaker tracks aren't terrible, and it's shockingly well produced. It's a pretty enjoyable and accessible listening experience from start to finish. Plus, it's got beginning of the end. There are a lot of great melodies on this album, which is why the songs are so good. But even if there are weaker tracks, the album feels genuinely competent despite its wacky concept. And songs like One More Hit? I mean, you know you shouldn't go cold turkey. And the closing song actually feels like a closer. So yeah, the two things I'd say are, it's a very listenable album. The fish is on my and while it's true that Weezer has a lot of albums that I like much more than Van Weezer, uh, that was it, those are the two things. So, 
You're probably thinking to yourself, Jesus Christ, did this guy really just rate Hurley and Van Weezer over a Maladroit? I hate this guy. And I get it, you haven't gotten over the Maladroit thing yet. It cuts deep by now. But don't you see? There are so many more albums that I'm going to rate above Maladroit. It's best to just make your peace with it now. And look, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just as surprised as you are that I, of all people, would put Pacific Daydream this high on the list. I swear to God, as recently as me starting this video, I thought Pacific Daydream was going to be one of my least favorite albums. I pretty much only liked QB Blitz before this. Be you like oxygen, but then one day, in preparation for this video, I was listening to Pacific Daydream, and something finally just clicked. As soon as I accepted the cheesy indie pop sound, I started to notice that beneath the weird lyrics and tacky choices were some genuine beautiful sounds. Just in terms of melody, this album is full of gorgeous moments. Sweet Mary, Weekend Woman, QB Blitz. I also really like Beach Boys and the Bridge of Mexican Fender. To me, this is Rivers in his White Album era doing an indie pop album. The beachy imagery, the storytelling lyrics, the melody choices, the stylistic similarities to Jacked Up. Now, I don't know about you, but I really like White Album era Weezer. I go back to that album a lot. So seeing those qualities in Pacific Daydream plays into why I like this album as much as I do. So even though I don't love every aspect of this album, and I could definitely do without songs like Get Right or La Mancha Screwjob, Pacific Daydream is an all-around solid listening experience, if you can get past the cheesy indie pop style. Look, I'm just gonna say it, Rivers Cuomo is a master of melody. He has the uncanny ability to write songs that are interesting and sentimental from a purely melodic standpoint. To me, a great Rivers song is kinda like a lullaby. It's beautiful, it's emotional, familiar yet unique, and most importantly, his performance always feels so emotionally honest. Like, you can tell that the song is coming from a place that rings true within him. And when you put all of those qualities together, you end up getting one of the best Weezer albums in their discography. But when you take away the emotional honesty part, you get green. That pretty much sums up how I feel about the vast majority of Green. The songs have beautiful, lullaby-esque melodies, but there's no emotional honesty at all. Like, these songs feel like they were made by Rivers GBT. The songs are almost great, but somehow they just can't seem to fully break through. They're missing that X factor. There are maybe three songs on this album that I feel have that extra sauce. And those songs are Island in the Sun, Hash Pipe, and Oh Girlfriend. But because of the production, all of the other songs, as beautiful as they may be, I'm looking at you smile, just end up feeling like bad background music to me. They all feel the same, which makes them not memorable, which makes the album kind of boring. And the thing is that when these songs are performed with actual emotion, they sound way better, like the 2005 rendition of Don't Let Go. But as the album experience stands, the production drastically nerves it. Like, it's definitely not bad or offensive at any point. It's above average, in fact. But it's just also not great like it could have been. I feel like I could never listen to the album versions of these songs again, and I'd be perfectly okay with that. Aside from maybe Island in the Sun. I do really like Island in the Sun. And the video. No, not that video. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Cute. I'd like to start this next entry off with a quote from Rivers Cuomo. Health, I need tungsten to live. Tungsten. Uh, sorry, that was the wrong clip. Here is the correct quote. A thousand keep fishings does not equal one say it ain't so. Rivers wrote that on New Year's Eve 2002, after the lukewarm response that fans had to Green and Maladroit. And even though he was clearly having an internal crisis about his songwriting abilities, he had a point. Something was missing, and he wasn't sure how to find it. Until Santa Claus appeared before him and said, Meditate, stupid. So Rivers moved into a Buddhist monastery and dedicated himself to meditation. And the result was make-believe. Now, people hate make-believe because of songs like Beverly Hills and We Are All On Drugs. I mean, hell, Pitchfork gave it a 0 0.4 out of 10. But I see it as a new beginning for Weezer. You have to remember that by 2002, Rivers had gone full douchebag. Like, he literally thought being an asshole would help him write better songs because that's how rock stars are supposed to act. I'm serious, this is not a joke. That's actually what he thought and did. But when Rivers moved into that monastery, he made an effort to change and redeem himself. And that is the theme that is all over make-believe. 
The lyrics are apologetic and gentle. Even the music can be timid at times. I mean, there's a freaking song about being scared of spiders. But all of that makes the music feel more honest, which to me is Rivers being true to himself for the first time since the 90s. Yes, aesthetically, this album is full of issues. The guitars are too loud in the mix, the sound is too polished, but I think the songs themselves are well crafted. And most importantly, they can be very captivating. I love Haunt You Every Day, Hold Me, The Other Way, Damage in Your Heart. The melodies on this album all have that winding quality that was so present on Blue and Pinkerton. And to me, that feels like a definitive feature of what makes Weezer so good. And the best example of that on Make Believe is the song Pardon Me. In my eyes, Pardon Me is everything that Make Believe does right boiled down into one song. It's got a fantastic melody, the subject matter is heartfelt, and it carries all the markers of a classic Weezer song. The callback harmonies, the wailing guitar solo, the buildup in the bridge that leads into that final chorus. Apologize to you and to anyone else that I hurt too. I may not be a perfect soul. That's good Weezer. And that, my friends, is the story of how Rivers got his tungsten back. So I've been thinking about this, and I think that Rivers should write a musical. Oh, okay, well, hear me out. Somebody else should write the lyrics for his music. Oh, okay. You know, if somebody mentioned a Weezer musical to me about 10 years ago, I'd probably go off into a rant about songs from the black hole and play what is this I find off my phone to someone who doesn't care. But if you mention a Weezer musical to me today, the first thing I think of is Seasons. Because the first time I ever noticed Weezer borrow elements from musicals was on the release of Summer. Songs like Lawn Chair, Thank You and Good Night, Cuomoville, and even Blue Like Jazz, they all have this theatrical quality to them, and I'm into it. The band does a good job of keeping the Weezer sound alive while also keeping it fresh with song structures and elements that they borrow from musicals. There's just a lot of unexpected songwriting decisions here. It could be something simple, like that extra bit of space that comes before the chorus of Blue Like Jazz, Jazz, or how the melodies play out in the choruses of songs like What's the Good in Being Good in Cuomoville, or maybe it's just the entirety of Thank You and Good Night. Either way, it keeps me on my toes in a good way. Now what this album doesn't do greatly is the production. To me, the stadium rock sound just does not match the angry tone we're supposedly being sold on. It's just far too refined and digital sounding. See, when Weezer said that they were going to be doing an angry album for summer, I was expecting them to go in the direction of their already existing angry sound. You know, something like Pinkerton. I think that the raw tone that they're known for would have sounded great here. Not that it ruins the album or anything, it just doesn't reach its full potential because of that. And as for the lyrics, I'm torn. On one hand, I kind of like the Angel story stuff, but on the other hand, blue like jazz, blue like jazz, show me how to be cool like that. You know, when I read it out loud like that, it kind of makes me want to hear Christopher Walken saying it. Blue like jazz, blue like jazz, show me how to be cool like that. And of course, who could forget such classics as Everybody laughed at me like I was a chimpanzee. In conclusion, feed him to the lions. What's your favorite rivers? We got Record Store Rivers, Loner Rivers, Hesher Rivers, Kurt Cobain Rivers, Asshole Rivers, Rick Moranis Rivers, and of course, my personal favorite, Cowboy Rivers. Yeah, just look at that gut and those thumbs in his belt buckles. He minds business. After Weezer made their second big comeback in 2005, a newly refreshed and creatively in tune Rivers Cuomo decided to embrace his weirdness and truly shake things up for the first time in the band's history. The result of that? The Red Album. Like with most Weezer projects, it's definitely not a perfect album, but man, does this baby have some gems. Songs like Pork and Beans, Dreamin', Greatest Man, The Angel and the One, these are some of the best songs in the band's discography. Like, this is top tier Weezer in my books. I also think that Greatest Man is very underappreciated. There is no other Weezer song that's even remotely this ambitious, and I think they fucking nailed it. Hell, I even love the awkward hands on Rivers in their 2008 Game Awards performance. Honestly, even the mid songs on this album are pretty endearing. Troublemaker is fun as hell, and I'm not just saying that because I covered it for Clink's video. So turn off Twitch TV, cause that's what others see. And TikTok is as bad as corporations posting memes. And I don't care what anyone says, I like heart songs. I've always liked heart songs. Even when Rivers kicked over the record player, I liked heart songs. But you know what I don't like? Automatic and Cold Dark World. Those songs 
fucking bad. And that I knew ain't great either. But honestly, the real tragedy here isn't that those are weak songs, it's that they use them instead of Pig, Miss Sweeney, and the Spider. Damn it, Weezer. Pig and Miss Sweeney are some of the best songs in your entire catalog. What the hell were you thinking leaving those out? And because they're deluxe tracks, I can't even count them for this video. Otherwise, I'd be rating Red even higher than I already am. I mean, we have nothing like The Spider on any album right now. It's such a unique song for the band, and it has some terrific lyrics. Well, except for the part where he rhymes down the drain with I'm insane, but I can forgive that. Terrible choices aside, this is a high tier Weezer album that does not get the recognition it deserves. Plus, it's got Cowboy Rivers. Damn. We're in the top seven now. You know what that means. Clear roads up ahead, nothing but that non-stop Disney gay Weezery goodness. I want to take you back to a dark period for Weezer fans. 2012. It had been two years since the last Weezer album, which was Hurley, and hopes for Weezer to release a consistently great album again were low. All we had to look forward to was Slurpee the musical. But then we got a teaser. Rivers singing about the briny. I swear to God, I must have rewatched this one clip like 50 times. I was so f***ing excited about it. And then slowly, over the next two years, we got more teasers of songs that would show up on their next album. And it was starting to look really promising. And then, oh my God, they actually f***ing did it. They made music that wasn't for teenagers. Songs about getting older? Songs about being a father? Guitar tones, harmonies, and colliding guitar buildups? Creative songwriting decisions? Harmonicas? Three-part closer? Weezer was f***ing back, baby! Yes, Make Belief was a return to better melodies, and yes, Red reached fantastic heights, but this was different. This was an all-around consistent album that felt like a direct sequel to the Weezer of the 90s. It was familiar, but it was new. Da Vinci with its pure blue album goodness, aside from the whistling, Cleopatra does the hard rock thing way better than Maldroid, and it has a 5-4 bar in its chorus, which is pretty damn cool. Lonely Girl is like a less compressed green album song. Foolish Father is all around fantastic. The opening riff to The British Are Coming is tasty as f This is a good album. Yeah, it could have been better than it currently is with the songs from Ece Homo, and if it had less copy-paste production and no f***ing whistling. But goddammit, I don't even care. This album holds a special place in my heart because it was a triumphant return for Weezer, and I truly do believe that it holds up to this day. So that's all there is to it. It's a good Weezer album. Two words. Chi-town, Southside, Worldwide, cuz I, rep that, till I f die. Sorry, I couldn't resist. But for real, two words. One neck, two chains, one waist. Wait, that's fucking Kanye again. Two words. Run, Raven, run. Okay, technically it's three words, but technically it's two words. I mean, let's be real. I could probably justify this album's placement on my list with Run, Raven, Run alone. But man, this EP is good. And it's good in a way that doesn't feel redundant either. This isn't just Weezer doing their 90s sound and me liking that by default because my nostalgia. It's actually just a good album. Can't Dance is catchy as hell and it's got a really cool bridge that does even more musical theater stuff. Hey, it's getting kind of cold out here. I'm all alone. Get Off On The Pain starts off a bit weak, but then the pre-chorus hits and it carries hard through to the rest of the song. Francesca has the cool key changes between the verse and chorus, and the melodies in general are pure Weezer-y goodness. Hell, I even enjoy the bizarre mashup of crunchy guitars and stroke commercials on Taste Like Pain. And while it's true that, yeah, What Happens After You is a f***ing terrible song for little babies who like Imagine Dragons, Weezer makes up for it by having a beautiful 60s style slow burner with Should She Stay or Should She Go. And it's got that sexy ass piano riff in the second pre-chorus that goes, that's good music. And then there's Run Raven Run, which is one of the best songs they've ever written. And that Pacific sunset portion is phenomenal and cathartic in a way that harkens back to Only in Dreams like nothing else they've ever done since. So to put it in three short words, great f***ing album. Wait, is that, is that what I think that is? Is that acoustic guitars mixed with grungy tones? Is that harmonicas? When we had that hurricane, blew away. Is that lullaby for Wayne? This is the Blue Album sound. They're actually doing the Blue Album sound. 
Okay, fine. It's not actually the Blue Album sound. They still take a lot of liberties with it, but this is sounding very close to 90s Weezer. Like the other Seasons EPs, the songs on this album are full of interesting songwriting decisions. Iambic Pentameter is already cool enough with its adventurous melody and syncopated instrumentals, but then the second half is like this Brian Wilson smile musical sweet thing, and it just kicks fucking ass. We also get cool musical style numbers like Sheridan Commander, which I find to be very compelling. And just generally, we get a lot of cool melodies on this record, but I'd be lying if I didn't say that some of the lyrics were really bad. Honestly, the simple truth is that modern Weezer would be 10 times better if music didn't have lyrics. I mean, just think about how good the melody to basketball is. No, 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 no. Now think about how bad the lyrics are. I can't throw this basketball into my own arms. It's incredibly frustrating to me to have a melody that good with instrumentals that sound so appealing to still cause me to cringe because the lyrics are that bad. Having said that, I find that Winter is good enough musically for me to just say f*** it, I'm gonna embrace the cringe. And what we get is one of the most consistently strong EPs from Weezer in their discography. For a long part of their history, Weezer was a band that always seemed to be reacting to something. Pinkerton was a reaction to Blue not being taken seriously, Green was a reaction to Pinkerton's poor album sales, Maladroit was a reaction to the fans reacting to Green, we got dogs. That's not a reaction to anything, I just wanted to say that. The point is that Weezer albums can be very wildly different from each other, one after another. So when u came out, and it was actually pretty solid, and Rivers said that fans probably wouldn't like his next project, you can imagine my worry. I'm thinking, God damn it, Weezer just started making sense again, and now he's abandoning the fans again? What happened to Sorry Guys, I didn't realize I needed you so much. But then, White came out. And as soon as I listened to that album, it was clear. The White album had everything you could want from Weezer. Whether you're an old curmudgeon like me that obsesses over the 90s, stuff, or you're a new fan that likes the direction they've gone in since then, it's an album that unites fans old and new. The Matt Damons and Leslie Joneses is of the world. Thank God for Girls with its weird lyrics and rap-like vocals. The way Wind in Our Sail blends modern pop principles with the classic Weezer sound. The key-changing chorus of Summer Elaine. The sudden urgency in the bridge of Do You Wanna Get High. Like seriously, there's a lot to point out on this album. It's also one of the few Weezer albums that I consistently come back to multiple times a year. There are, of course, some cringe lyrical moments as there always are, but for the most part, it's actually pretty good. It's really just the teenagery concept stuff that feels off to me. You know, all the not all 19 year olds are cool type stuff. And I think we can all agree that they could have done a little bit better than I love your long hair, but you just don't care. But regardless, this album and this era of Weezer is pretty damn fantastic. I would consider the White Album to be a top tier Weezer album. Oh, and shout outs to Brian who wrote LA Girls and Endless Bummer, which are two of the best songs on this album. I think the best way to sum up OK Human is in this Anthony Fantano reaction video. You know, I, I think at this point in his career, you know, Rivers certainly still is showcasing like some lyrical shortcomings for sure. Wow. I feel bad about what I just said. Now, I don't necessarily agree with Fantano's Weezer takes, but that shit's pretty fucking fun. Only Rivers can deliver unintentional juxtapositions on that level. Now, I'm gonna be honest, choosing between OK Human and White for the number three spot was not easy. I'm honestly still not sure which album I prefer. They're both fantastic. But OK Human has a lot going for it. The beautifully orchestrated arrangements, the playful harmonies, tasteful subject matter. These are the things that make me love the album. And a great example of that would be Bird with a Broken Wing. It's got a fantastic theme and emotional melody the orchestral parts work perfectly here. I honestly think the song is a career highlight for Rivers. And it's far from the only great song. A Lugo B, Grapes of Wrath, Playing My Piano, Mirror Image, La Brea Tar Pits. These are all amazing Weezer songs. If you have any of those songs in your top 20, you are 100% justified in doing so. And even if A Lugo B kind of rips off Michael and Carly, oh, oh, oh. best friends. It's still fantastic, and it's original enough that I don't care about the melodic similarities. The other songs on the album are not quite as amazing, but they're still really good, and I would take them over a lot of Weezer songs. Underneath the sea. For example, Dead Roses. That song doesn't seem to get much love for whatever reason, but I think it's got an especially beautiful chorus. To me, it kind of feels like a spiritual successor to haunt you every day. So yeah, 30 years into their career, and the band is still capable of writing great music. And that's impressive.
So it's come to this. You knew it was gonna come to this. Of course I saved the first two albums for the top of this list. They're the best albums. What'd you think I was gonna rate Hurley up here? Did you think I was gonna put make the hell is this? I didn't put this in my video. Okay, seriously, who's doing this? Here, let me just change the background back to green. Delete that text. I'll just drag my profile picture back here. Okay, is this like a prank or something? Like, what is this? I didn't approve this Undertale ripoff for my video. Oh sure, okay, so your opinions matter, but mine don't. That's very open-minded. What about the Blue Album? What are you doing? No. You piece of shit. What are you doing with Pinkerton? What? Below green, there's no way any true Weezer fan thinks that. No. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. I can see that you're mad. Look, I get it. I, I really do. I disagree with my friends about how these albums should be ranked all the time. I know how it feels. I'm just some guy on the internet. My opinions don't matter. Look, what I think is good or bad isn't what's important. You're missing the big picture here. You love Weezer, right? Well, so do I. And yeah, maybe I went a little too hard on the albums I rated in the first half of this video. At the end of the day, I love this band too. And I still think that Rivers Cuomo is one of the most important songwriters in my life. Look, we don't need to continue this ranking. I was gonna put both of their 90s albums as a tie anyways. Let me just say a closing remark and I'll end the video. Truce? If you're still watching this ridiculous video, then I'm guessing you probably love Weezer just like I do. Maybe you disagreed with pretty much everything I said, maybe you thought it was right on point, or maybe I landed somewhere in the middle. Whichever it is, the important thing is that we're all here because Weezer has a special place in our hearts. And I can tell you from experience that no matter what Rivers and the boys have in store for us next, I'm gonna be there to listen to it. And if it sucks, then I'll optimistically wait for what comes next. And if it rules, then you know I'll be singing their praises. So until next time, just remember that regardless of my opinion, or yours, we're all here together for the same reason. Because we love Weezer. Okay, but seriously, go listen to some Ozma.